Nerve Agent, Wikipedia Article Audio Nerve agents are a class of organic chemicals that disrupt the mechanisms by which nerves transfer messages to organs. The disruption is caused by the blocking of acetylcholinesterase, an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter. Biological Effects Mechanism of Action Antidotes Countermeasures in Development Classes G-Series V-Series Novi Chalk Agents Insecticides Methods of Spreading History Discovery During World War II Post-World War II Ocean disposal Poisoning by a nerve agent leads to contraction of pupils, profuse salivation, convulsions, and involuntary urination and defecation, with the first symptoms appearing in seconds after exposure. Death by asphyxiation or cardiac arrest may follow in minutes due to the loss of the body's control over respiratory and other muscles. Some nerve agents are readily vaporized or aerosolized, and the primary portal of entry into the body is the respiratory system. Nerve agents can also be absorbed through the skin, requiring that those likely to be subjected to such agents wear a full body suit in addition to a respirator. Nerve agents are generally colorless to amber-colored, tasteless liquids that may evaporate to a gas. Agents Sarin and VX are odorless, Tabun has a slightly fruity odor and Salmon has a slight camphor odor. Nerve agents attack the nervous system of the human body. All such agents function the same way, by inhibiting the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, which is responsible for the breakdown of acetylcholine in the synapse. ACH gives the signal for muscles to contract. Thus, if it cannot be broken down, muscles are prevented from relaxing and they are effectively paralyzed. 131-139 This includes the heart and the muscles used for breathing. Because of this, the first symptoms usually appear within seconds of exposure and death can occur via asphyxiation or cardiac arrest in a few minutes. Initial symptoms following exposure to nerve agents are a runny nose, tightness in the chest, and constriction of the pupils. Soon after, the victim will have difficulty breathing and will experience nausea and salivation. As the victim continues to lose control of bodily functions, involuntary salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, gastrointestinal pain, and vomiting will be experienced. Blisters and burning of the eyes and slash or lungs may also occur. This phase is followed by initially myoclonic jerks followed by status epilepticus type epileptic seizure. Death then comes via complete respiratory depression, most likely via the excessive peripheral activity at the neuromuscular junction of the diaphragm, 147-149. The effects of nerve agents are long-lasting and increase with continued exposure. Survivors of nerve agent poisoning almost invariably suffer chronic neurological damage and related psychiatric effects. Possible effects that can last at least up to 2-3 years after exposure include blurred vision, tiredness, declined memory, hoarse voice, palpitations, sleeplessness, shoulder stiffness, and eye strain. In people exposed to nerve agents, serum and erythrocyte acetylcholinesterase in the long term are noticeably lower than normal and tend to be lower the worse the persisting symptoms are. When a normally functioning motor nerve is stimulated, it releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which transmits the impulse to a muscle or organ. Once the impulse is sent, 
the enzyme acetylcholinesterase immediately breaks down the acetylcholine in order to allow the muscle or organ to relax. Nerve agents disrupt the nervous system by inhibiting the function of the enzyme acetylcholinesterase by forming a covalent bond with its active site, where acetylcholine would normally be broken down. Acetylcholine thus builds up and continues to act so that any nerve impulses are continually transmitted and muscle contractions do not stop. This same action also occurs at the gland and organ levels, resulting in uncontrolled drooling, tearing of the eyes and excess production of mucus from the nose. The structures of the complexes of salmon with acetylcholinesterase from Torpedo Californica have been solved by X-ray crystallography 2WG0, 2WG1, and 1SOM. The mechanism of action of salmon could be seen on example of 2WFZ. Atropine and related anticholinergic drugs act as antidotes to nerve agent poisoning because they block acetylcholine receptors but they are poisonous in their own right. Some synthetic anticholinergics, such as bipyridin, may counteract the central symptoms of nerve agent poisoning better than atropine, since they pass the blood-brain barrier better than atropine. While these drugs will save the life of a person affected by nerve agents, that person may be incapacitated briefly or for an extended period depending on the extent of exposure. The endpoint of atropine administration is the clearing of bronchial secretions. Atropine for field use by military personnel is often loaded in an auto-injector, for ease of use in stressful conditions. Prolidoxime chloride, also known as 2-PAM chloride, is also used as an antidote. Rather than counteracting the initial effects of the nerve agent on the nervous system as does atropine, prolidoxime chloride reactivates the poisoned enzyme by scavenging the phosphoryl group attached on the functional hydroxyl group of the enzyme. Though safer to use than atropine, it takes longer to act. Revival of acetylcholinesterase with prolidoxime chloride works more effectively on nicotinic receptors while blocking acetylcholine receptors with atropine is more effective on muscarinic receptors. Often, severe cases of poisoning are treated with both drugs. Butyryl cholinesterase is a prophylactic countermeasure against organophosphate nerve agents. It binds nerve agent in the bloodstream before it can exert effects in the nervous system. Because it is a biological scavenger, it is currently the only therapeutic agent effective in providing complete stoichiometric protection against the entire spectrum of organophosphate nerve agents. There are two main classes of nerve agents. The members of the two classes share similar properties and are given both a common name and a two-character NATO identifier. The G-series is thus named because German scientists first synthesized them. G-series agents are known as non-persistent, while the V-series are persistent. All of the compounds in this class were discovered and synthesized during or prior to World War II led by Gerhard Schrader. This series is the first and oldest family of nerve agents. The first nerve agent ever synthesized was GA in 1936. GB was discovered next in 1939, followed by GD in 1944, and finally the more obscure GF in 1949. GB was the only G agent that was fielded by the U.S. as a munition, in rockets, aerial bombs, and artillery shells. The V-series is the second family of nerve agents and contains five well-known members, V, VG, VM, VR, and VX, along with several more obscure analogs. This class of compounds is also sometimes known as Tamlin's esters, after Lars Erik Tamellen of the Swedish National Defense Research Institute. 
The most studied agent in this family, VX, was invented in the 1950s at Porton Down in the United Kingdom. Ranajit Ghosh, a chemist at the Plant Protection Laboratories of Imperial Chemical Industries was investigating a class of organophosphate compounds. Like Schrader, Ghosh found that they were quite effective pesticides. In 1954, ICI put one of them on the market under the trade name Amiton. It was subsequently withdrawn, as it was too toxic for safe use. The toxicity did not go unnoticed and some of the more toxic materials had been sent to the British Armed Forces Research Facility at Porton Down for evaluation. After the evaluation was complete, several members of this class of compounds became a new group of nerve agents, the V-agents. The best known of these is probably VX, with VR coming a close second. All of the V agents are persistent agents, meaning that these agents do not degrade or wash away easily and can therefore remain on clothes and other surfaces for long periods. In use, this allows the V agents to be used to blanket terrain to guide or curtail the movement of enemy ground forces. The consistency of these agents is similar to oil, as a result. The contact hazard for V-agents is primarily but not exclusively dermal. VX was the only V-series agent that was fielded by the U.S. as a munition, in rockets, artillery shells, airplane spray tanks, and landmines. The Novichok agents are a series of organophosphate compounds that were developed in the Soviet Union from the mid-1960s to the 1990s. The goal of this program was to develop and manufacture highly deadly chemical weapons that were unknown to the West. These new agents were designed to be undetectable by standard NATO chemical detection equipment and to defeat chemical protective gear. In addition to the newly developed third-generation weapons, binary versions of several Soviet agents were developed and were designated as Novichok agents. Some insecticides, including carbamates and organophosphates such as dichlorvose, malathion and parathion, are nerve agents. The metabolism of insects is sufficiently different from mammals that these compounds have little effect on humans and other mammals at proper doses, but there is considerable concern about the effects of long-term exposure to these chemicals by farm workers and animals alike. At high enough doses, acute toxicity and death can occur through the same mechanism as other nerve agents. Organophosphate pesticide poisoning is a major cause of disability in many developing countries and is often the preferred method of suicide. Many methods exist for spreading nerve agents such as The method chosen will depend on the physical properties of the nerve agent used the nature of the target, and the achievable level of sophistication. This first class of nerve agents, the G-series, was accidentally discovered in Germany on December 23, 1936, by a research team headed by Gerhard Schrader working for IG Farben. Since 1934, Schrader had been working in a laboratory in Leverkusen to develop new types of insecticides for IG Farben. While working toward his goal of improved insecticide, Schrader experimented with numerous compounds, eventually leading to the preparation of Tabun. In experiments, Tabun was extremely potent against insects, as little as 5 ppm of Tabun killed all the leaf lice he used in his initial experiment. In January 1937, Schrader observed the effects of nerve agents on human beings firsthand when a drop of Tabun spilled onto a lab bench. Within minutes he and his laboratory assistant began to experience meiosis, dizziness, and severe shortness of breath. It took them three weeks to recover fully. 
In 1935 the Nazi government had passed a decree that required all inventions of possible military significance to be reported to the Ministry of War, so in May 1937 Schrader sent a sample of Tabun to the Chemical Warfare Section of the Army Weapons Office in berlin spandau Schrader was summoned to the Wehrmacht Chemical Lab in Berlin to give a demonstration, after which Schrader's patent application and all related research was classified as secret. Colonel Rudiger, head of the CW section, ordered the construction of new laboratories for the further investigation of Tabun and other organophosphate compounds and Schrader soon moved to a new laboratory at Wuppertal, Elberfeld in the Ruhr Valley to continue his research in secret throughout World War II. The compound was initially codenamed LE-100 and later Trillin-83. Sarin was discovered by Schrader and his team in 1938 and named after their initials, S. Crater, Ambrose, R. Udiger and Van der L. and D. It was codenamed T-144 or Trillin-46. It was found to be more than ten times as potent as Tabun. Salmon was discovered by Richard Kuhn in 1944 as he worked with the existing compounds, the name is derived from either the Greek to sleep or the Latin to bludgeon. It was codenamed T-300. Cycloserin was also discovered during World War II but the details were lost and it was discovered again in 1949. The G-Series naming system was created by the United States when it uncovered the German activities, labeling Tabun as GA, Sarin as GB and Salmon as GD. Ethyl Sarin was tagged GE and Cycloserin as GF. In 1939, a pilot plant for Tabun production was set up at Munster Lager, on Lüneburg Heath near the German Army Proving Grounds at Rogkammer. In January 1940, construction began on a secret plant, code-named Hotchwork, for the production of Tabun at De Hernfurth and Der Oder, on the Oder River 40 km from Breslau in Silesia. The plant was large, covering an area of 2.4 by 0.8 km and was completely self-contained synthesizing all intermediates as well as the final product, Tabun. The factory even had an underground plant for filling munitions, which were then stored at Krapitz in Upper Silesia. The plant was operated by Energona GmbH, a subsidiary of IG Farben, as were all other chemical weapon agent production plants in Germany at the time. Because of the plant's deep secrecy and the difficult nature of the production process, it took from January 1940 until June 1942 for the plant to become fully operational. Many of Tabun's chemical precursors were so corrosive that reaction chambers not lined with quartz or silver soon became useless. Tabun itself was so hazardous that the final processes had to be performed while enclosed in double glass lined chambers with a stream of pressurized air circulating between the walls. Uncontrolled aerosol munitions, smoke generation, explosive dissemination, atomizers, humidifiers, and foggers. Four pipe fitters had liquid to bun drain onto them and died before their rubber suits could be removed. A worker had two liters of to bun pour down the neck of his rubber suit. He died within two minutes. Seven workers were hit in the face with a stream of to bun of such force that the liquid was forced behind their respirators. Only two survived despite resuscitation measures. 3,000 German nationals were employed at Hotch work, all equipped with respirators and clothing constructed of a poly-layered rubber-slash-cloth-slash-rubber sandwich that was destroyed after the tenth wearing. Despite all precautions, there were over 300 accidents before production even began and at least 10 workers died during the two and a half years of operation. Some incidents cited in a higher form of killing 
the secret history of chemical and biological warfare are as follows. The plant produced between 10.000 and 30.000 tons of tabun before its capture by the Soviet Army and moved, probably to Jerzhinsk, USSR. In 1940 the German Army Weapons Office ordered the mass production of sarin for wartime use. A number of pilot plants were built and a high production facility was under construction by the end of World War II. Estimates for total sarin production by Nazi Germany range from 500 kg to 10 tons. During that time, German intelligence believed that the Allies also knew of these compounds, assuming that because these compounds were not discussed in the Allies' scientific journals information about them was being suppressed. Though sarin, tabun, and salmon were incorporated into artillery shells, the German government ultimately decided not to use nerve agents against Allied targets. The Allies did not learn of these agents until shells filled with them were captured towards the end of the war. This is detailed in Joseph Borkin's book The Crime and Punishment of I.G. Farben. Speer, who was strongly opposed to the introduction of Tabun, flew Otto Ambrose, I.G.S. authority on poison gas as well as synthetic rubber, to the meeting. Hitler asked Ambrose, what is the other side doing about poison gas? Ambrose explained that the enemy, because of its greater access to ethylene, probably had a greater capacity to produce mustard gas than Germany did. Hitler interrupted to explain that he was not referring to traditional poison gases, I understand that the countries with petroleum are in a position to make more, but Germany has a special gas, to bun. In this we have a monopoly in Germany. He specifically wanted to know whether the enemy had access to such a gas and what it was doing in this area. To Hitler's disappointment Ambrose replied, I have justified reasons to assume that to bun, too, is known abroad. I know that to bun was publicized as early as 1902 that sarin was patented and that these substances appeared in patents. Ambrose was informing Hitler of an extraordinary fact about one of Germany's most secret weapons. The essential nature of Tabun and sarin had already been disclosed in the technical journals as far back as 1902 and IG had patented both products in 1937 and 1938. Ambrose then warned Hitler that if Germany used to bun, it must face the possibility that the Allies could produce this gas in much larger quantities. Upon receiving this discouraging report, Hitler abruptly left the meeting. The nerve gases would not be used, for the time being at least, although they would continue to be produced and tested. Since World War II, Iraq's use of mustard gas against Iranian troops and Kurds has been the only large-scale use of any chemical weapons. On the scale of the single Kurdish village of Halabjia within its own territory, Iraqi forces did expose the populace to some kind of chemical weapons, possibly mustard gas and most likely nerve agents. In the Gulf War, no nerve agents were used but a number of U.S. and U.K. personnel were exposed to them when the Kamisia chemical depot was destroyed. This and the widespread use of anticholinergic drugs as a protective treatment against any possible nerve gas attack have been proposed as a possible cause of Gulf War syndrome. A widely publicized use of nerve agents was the 1995 terrorist attack in which operatives of the Aum Shinrikyo religious group released sarin into the Tokyo subway system. Sarin gas was deployed in a 2013 attack on Gouda during the Syrian civil war, killing several hundred people. Most governments contend that forces loyal to President Bashar al-Assad deployed the gas. However, the Syrian government has denied responsibility.
On February 13, 2017, the nerve agent VX was used in the assassination of Kim Jong-nam, half-brother of the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, at Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia. On March 4, 2018, a former Russian agent, Sergei Skripal and his daughter who was visiting from Moscow were both poisoned by a nerve agent. They remained in a critical condition in hospital as of mid-March, 2018. Russian diplomats were expelled from the United Kingdom as retaliation. In addition, a Wiltshire police officer, Nick Bailey, was exposed to the substance. He was one of the first to respond to the incident. Twenty-one members of the public received medical treatment following exposure to the nerve agent. Despite this, only Bailey and the Scripals remained in critical conditions. On March 11, 2018, Public Health England issued advice for the other people believed to have been in the Mill Pub or the nearby Zizi restaurant. On March 12, 2018, British Prime Minister Theresa May stated that the substance used was a Novichok nerve agent. In 1972, the United States Congress banned the practice of disposing chemical weapons into the ocean. 32,000 tons of nerve and mustard agents had already been dumped into the ocean waters off the United States by the U.S. Army primarily as part of Operation Chase. According to a 1998 report by William Brankowitz, a deputy project manager in the U.S. Army Chemical Materials Agency, the Army created at least 26 chemical weapons dump sites in the ocean off at least 11 states on both the west and east coasts. Due to poor records, they currently only know the rough whereabouts of half of them. There is currently a lack of scientific data regarding the ecological and health effects of this dumping. In the event of leakage, many nerve agents are soluble in water and would dissolve in a few days, while other substances like sulfur mustard could last longer. There have also been a few incidents of chemical weapons washing ashore or being accidentally retrieved, for example during dredging or trawl fishing operations.